should sing Germana quite here with you. <laughs> so, hello Cardiff, uh, my name's Di, I'm from San Cholen, um, which is a lovely little village, very beautiful, very close-knit, as we like to say, your cousin's okay to practice on. <laughs> hey, Albert Einstein married his cousin, it's all relative. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> so, um, I've been researching psychedelics recently, and after analysing my data using Moxley's test of sphericity to check for homogeneity of variance so that my parametric assumptions have been met, I've come to the conclusion that magic mushrooms are fucking amazing! <laughs> I'll never forget my first time. When you start coming up, you laugh your tits off for the first couple of hours. I think it's because you realise right, that life is a wonderful adventure that can be filled with fun. Or maybe it's because they're free. <laughs> After a few more hours, I remember becoming sort of viscerally aware that I was connected to the collective unconscious. And life wasn't a series of random events, but an expression of a deeper underlying order. When I looked up into the heavens, there was this ethereal glow, radiating rays of refulgent light and love. I could almost touch it. Boy, it said, never live in fear of anything in this life. What is just a waste of your imagination. Life is transient, but your soul is eternal. Tidy, I thought. <laughs> Right, it said, I'm off. Whoosh, it was gone. That was it, that was it. Never forget it, never forget it. <laughs> um, do you know, a few generations, a number of generations ago now, right, we'd have taken psychedelics as a collective, sharing the exact same experience. What the fucking trip. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, right, I've got enough machines with me for us all. <laughs> <laughs> if you're unsure, right, I'll just raise a point. Now, in the film The Matrix, Morpheus offers Neo the choice of two pills, a red and a blue. Now, if you would have chosen the blue pill where the true nature of reality is revealed, then psychedelics could be for you. But if you thought to yourself, fuck it, I'll take them both and see what happens, they're definitely for you. <laughs> Aldous Huxley once took 400 milligrams of mescaline yeah. and described his experience as a mystical ecstasy in which for an infinite moment all contradictions seem reconciled or once irrelevant, an experience was felt to define the ultimate reality. Boundless, timeless, Ineffable. I'm going to have a lager. <laughs> <laughs> um, Christopher Mayhew well, um, was the first person to knowingly take LSD. Now, he was a politician and an author. He was a foreign minister traveling around the world. Some 30 years later, when asked about his experience, he said it was the most interesting thing that he ever did. Now for me, it has to be the sixth, no, second time I was ever sectioned of the mental health act. <laughs> I know it's not a popular choice, but if we're talking interesting, I thought I recognised you as well. <laughs> I did actually, right? I wouldn't have talked to you later. I thought when I saw you, I know you from somewhere. And I thought it's I thought it's either prison or a psychiatric world. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, maybe later, right? <laughs> I'm pretending to be sane at the moment, right? So, yes, um, yeah, don't get me wrong, right? It was never on any list of things to do. When I said I wanted to see the world, that isn't what I meant. But the first time was a bit of a shock. It's uh, what I'd like to call my Nathaniel Lee moment. Now, he was one of the first people to ever be sectioned in Bedlam, and, and he said, they call me mad. I call them mad, but damn them, they outvoted me. <laughs> <laughs> Two psychiatrists, a nurse, and a social worker outvoted me. Um, apparently, I have, or oh, my psychiatrist says I have bipolar affective disorder with occasional psychosis. Superpowers, I like to call it. <laughs> I 
Salmon, I am like the Clark Kent of the crazy world. Like, like to look at me, you wouldn't know it. But I'm actually wearing a cape underneath my clothes. <laughs> um, they say in the UK now that um, a third of the UK population suffer with some form of mental health condition. And when it gets to 50%, that's when we'll make our move. <laughs> but of the remaining two thirds, right, a third of them are suppressing it with drugs and alcohol, which means that the remaining third, well, they're a the fucking problem, aren't they? <laughs> What is madness but nobility of the soul at odds with circumstance, where a multidimensional reality is made manifest through the archetypes of the unconscious and the union synchronistic matter? Basically, what I'm trying to say is it's very fucking complicated. <laughs> I, uh, it's, hard, um, it's hard to find love, though, when you've got mental health problems. They say there's someone out there for everyone. Does anyone know when Rosemary West gets released? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.